What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna do an update on SpaceX's Project Starlink. Um, they just completed the third rocket launch ever for Project Starlink, putting 60 more satellites in the sky, bringing SpaceX one step closer to becoming an internet service provider and launching um, their satellite uh, internet service. This has been a plan that's been in the works for years from SpaceX to launch over 10,000 uh, low Earth orbit satellites, basically a constellation orbiting the Earth that will beam down internet. Originally, it was marketed as something to help, you know, underserved populations who currently don't have internet access to get online, um, but it's become increasingly uh, apparent that this is actually going to be a high-speed internet service in the long run, uh, competing with, you know, AT&T, Verizon, fiber optic cables, that sort of level of performance. So this is a fascinating project um, for SpaceX, really the second tier of their business beyond core rocket launches, and something that SpaceX's management team has projected could be a far uh, bigger business than rocket launches in the long term. So not only is this super exciting from a consumer perspective of how the internet is changing, it's going to get more competitive, um, it's likely that we're all going to get better, faster, cheaper internet, but also from the perspective of this is going to be SpaceX's moneymaker, this is the potential to transform SpaceX's business and actually fund the development of technology to get us to Mars, so super exciting stuff, so basically want to unpack the progress that's been made, because we're actually getting as far away and as crazy as this sounds, very close to Project Starlink launching, so on SpaceX's website, they say they're planning to launch Starlink um, in the northern U.S. and Canada in 2020, rapidly expanding to near global coverage of the populated world by 2021. So this is happening. Um, SpaceX is planning to make it so people in the U.S. and Canada are going to be able to access this new internet service by the end of this year. And so that sounds like a wildly ambitious claim, but if you look at the work that SpaceX has been putting in to be able to make that happen, um, it kind of makes sense. So they've just uh, completed that uh, 60 satellite launch that I talked about. Um, they have 23 more launches planned by the end of this year, which would bring the Starlink constellation to over 1,500 satellites. Just for perspective, the 180 that they already have in the sky now is make, makes it the world's largest satellite constellation. So this would be by far the largest um, by the end of the year if they do even, you know, uh, just a fraction of these launches that are planned. Um, in the long run, though, they are actually looking to launch, as I said, over 10,000 satellites. And they've even actually are currently seeking approval to expand that to about 30,000 satellites. Um, and it, Elon Musk has said that about 12,000 satellites, the which are low Earth orbit satellites, um, the, the service would work really well. They last about one to five years, and then when they come back in the Earth's orbit, they sort of disintegrate and blow up, or most of the satellite does. Um, and so that's why they need a, they're trying to get approval for 30,000, it looks like, because they want to set up a plan to continuously be launching you know, thousands of these satellites per year to maintain this global network. What makes SpaceX so different than any other company on the planet and what makes them so unique and be able to pull off this satellite internet service unlike anyone has ever done in the past is their rocket technology, specifically the fact that SpaceX has made rockets reusable. This is something that was thought impossible by the aerospace titans Boeing and Lockheed Martin, but of course Elon Musk uh, you know, does the impossible and has created a reusable rocket. So this makes the, the cost per rocket launch drastically cheaper. One of the main costs of building a satellite network is launching all of those satellites into the sky and so if you can reduce the cost of that launch, then you're making it way cheaper to launch the entire network of satellites. Um, for example, if you look back in the history books, there was a company called Iridium that tried to launch its own satellite network. They spent about $5 billion to launch 66 satellites, the first phase of their program. Their user results were super underwhelming. The performance of the network wasn't good. They ended up having to shut it down. I mean, if we look at a similar comparison to how much SpaceX is spending, it's just a fraction of that cost. Um, there's a really awesome YouTube channel called Curious Elephant that I recommend you all check out about. They have some amazing SpaceX videos. One of them estimates, um, they've done a lot of research into this, the cost of a launch of 60 Starlink satellites at about $60 million, about $30 million for the rocket to actually launch it, about another $30 million for the satellites. That's about a $500,000 cost per satellite. Um, and so if you compare that to, you know, their 23 plan launches this year, 24 plan launches this year, that's $1.5 billion for, you know, to launch 1,500 satellites. Iridium spent $5 billion to launch just 66. So you can see how SpaceX being vertically integrated and being able to launch its own rockets leads to dramatic cheaper costs um, and what is frankly a huge competitive advantage to set up this new internet infrastructure. For comparison, there's been a ton of talk about 5G, what's going to happen with the traditional infrastructure that we have today in the telecom market. Um, there's an uh, article that came out about Bloomberg that says it could cost up to $200 billion a year to implement 5G. There's been a bunch of different estimates, but they're all around the hundreds of billions of dollars just to upgrade the current infrastructure that we have today. And there's indications on the Real Engineering channel that I was watching, which is another awesome uh 
Starlink video. I'll put a link in the description where they actually assumed that the cost or the speed of the Starlink internet would be even potentially faster than these new 5G networks. And if you look at the cost, it would cost about, you know, a fraction, like one tenth the amount to actually deploy. So even though these cost numbers, like in the CNN article, $10 billion to build and launch all these satellites is actually so much cheaper than the alternatives to actually build out, you know, or upgrade our current infrastructure with a bunch of cables underground. I mean, this is totally setting a new paradigm um, for what the internet could be and will be, because if it's way cheaper to set up than anything that exists today, it's going to be way cheaper to access than anything that exists today. And that's a game changer. Um, I found this website, internetworldstats.com. They assume that about out of the 7.7 billion people on the planet, um, there's about 4.5 billion internet users. So there's about 58.8% of the world that is already connected to the internet. But that does mean about 3.2 billion people are not connected to the internet. So um, that just goes to show you, you know, the target that SpaceX has here. But just in general, 7.7 billion people who all need access to the internet, who are the people who have access are already paying way too much for a crappy service. So the opportunity for this as a business is extremely exciting. If we take a look at this very interesting leaked infographic to the Wall Street Journal um, that was actually published in 2015 or 2016, so a long time ago, but you'll notice that th the key takeaway here is that uh, SpaceX is projecting that satellite internet revenue will dwarf launch revenue, a fundamental key. And as you see, their profit projections skyrocket at that time as well. So SpaceX is, it's, or seemingly as of a few years ago, was really planning for Starlink, their internet service, to be the main cash cow for the company um, and turn them into a profitable behemoth, be the majority of their revenue, really fund or give them the excess cash flow to fund new research and technology to get us to Mars. Such a critical piece of SpaceX's business plan. And if you crunch some numbers, of course, it makes sense. With hundreds of the addressable market in the billions of people, I mean, if you just do a quick calculation, I assumed, uh, I'll put the, a link to this in the description, just super simple. If we assume 10,000 customers in 2020 as it gets off the ground, $5 per month times 12, that gets you an annual revenue estimate of, of the network size per year. So I have this expanding to, you know, 300 million by 2025, basically assumed it goes up 100x the first year to a million, 10x the next year to 10 million, then 5x the, uh, to 50 million, 3x to 150 million, doubling to 300 million. Um, that would be about 5% or 4% of the world's population, leveraging Starlink, 18 billion a year. I mean, you can plug in these projections if you want, um, but I think $5 a month is pretty cheap. But the point is here, um, SpaceX's current business, if you Google it, is around 2 to 3 billion a year in launches. Um, that's not growing extremely rapidly, but Starlink could be in the tens of billions of revenue in just a few years um, by signing up a fraction of its addressable market. So the business opportunity for Starlink is potentially 10, 20 times bigger than that of the core launch business. SpaceX's reusable rocket technology is really allowing them to do all of this. Um, there's actually been a bunch of other companies that are planning to do a similar satellite internet service. I mean, Amazon is actually looking for approval to launch a network of about 3,200 internet satellites um, around the globe, low earth orbit to beam internet to hard to reach places, almost exactly like SpaceX's business plan. We've also got a report from Bloomberg as of a couple weeks ago that Apple is has a top secret team working on its own satellite kind of technology to beam down internet um, from you know satellites so that it doesn't have to use traditional carriers like AT&T and Verizon. So a bunch of tech companies are plowing a lot of money into this space. But if you think about it, every single one of these plans relies on launching a bunch of satellites into space. If you own that launch technology like SpaceX does, and you have by far the cheapest launch, your cost to pull this off and your even ability to pull this off is in, it's far superior to anyone else. I mean, Amazon and Jeff Bezos do have Blue Origin, his rocket company that's developing their own technology that's a little bit behind SpaceX. So maybe they'll try and or be able to launch their own satellites. But for companies like Apple, um, you know, they're going to have to rely on somebody to launch all of their satellites. So it just seems like SpaceX has been uniquely positioned to be to really pull off the first truly global mass adopted um, satellite internet because of their breakthrough in reusable rocket technology, which has dropped the cost so dramatically. So that even gets you to think thinking about moonshots about like companies like Apple with 100 billion, you know, in net cash. Are they incentivized to start partnering up with SpaceX, invest a couple billion, accelerate the launch of Starlink, leverage that be the first exclusive company to use Starlink so they can cut out AT&T and Verizon and you can get way faster, cheaper internet access on your Apple devices. I mean, I think that's a really interesting moonshot of where, you know, I think one of these big tech companies could eventually partner with uh, SpaceX to leverage this Starlink technology. But anyway, that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Um, let's dive, in into, d dive down into when this is actually launching. Elon Musk did offer a clue. Um, someone tweeted at him after the launch saying, how many more Starlink launches until it's operational for Canada and Northern US? He said at least four. Um, um, so that sounds like a lot, but that could just be in, a, in you know, six months or so. We could actually be seeing um, the first, you know, real people signing up for and using Starlink in Canada and the U.S. That's, that's pretty incredible. 
Also, a big piece of this puzzle is the antenna. How do you actually receive that internet? Um, Elon Musk commented on that on Twitter as well, saying that it looks like a thin, flat, round UFO on a stick. Starlink terminal has motors to self-adjust optimal angle to view sky. Instructions are simple or simply plug in socket, point at sky. These instructions work in either these instructions work in either order. No training required. So there you have it, folks. SpaceX is well on its way to launching its own satellite internet service. They have over 100 satellites in the sky already, soon to be having thousands in the sky in the next couple of years. I mean, this plan is moving at a breakneck pace. Some astronomers and people on the internet are complaining that this is going to ruin astrology because the skies were only going to see um, these satellites. I don't know enough about astrology to know about that, but I do was reading into it a little bit. And although you can see these satellites super clearly after they launch, they apparently float a little bit higher after that, making them harder to see. So I don't know how that that's going to play into it all. But this is a fascinating new technology and new paradigm. And it sounds like kind of next generation internet infrastructure 2.0. I think there's a reason why Amazon and Apple are also investing in, in this along with SpaceX, because they view this as the future of how the internet will work. Um, and I just think the way the internet is today on earth, you know, we have all these wires connecting everything. It's super like it's all these oligopolies that run it. AT&T, Verizon, they're super slow. The customer service sucks. The prices seem way too high. So I think all of that is on the cusp of changing uh, because there's going to be this new competition. And I think this is a huge cash cow and business opportunity for SpaceX that frankly, um, if this actually starts to get off the ground and be a successful project, I think will lead to a dramatic increase in the valuation of SpaceX. SpaceX is currently worth around the mid $30 billion mark as of their last funding round. Um, but this, this uh, I think a lot of that valuation and potential for that to go up is resting on the success of this network. So I'm going to be following that very closely on the channel. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. Is SpaceX actually going to pull off a satellite-based internet? Because it looks like they are. I mean, that's that's pretty epic. Would love to know below. Um, anyway, this is Hyperchange. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. See you guys next time. Peace.